Okay, here we are. Welcome to Sunday Morning Grace. My name is Reverend Carolyn McGee, and it is my pleasure as always uh, to be here with Reverend Don Simpson and share some sacred time with all of you. So um, before we dive into our amazing topic this month, if it's safe for you, close your eyes, get your feet on the ground, and let's gather our circle with three deep breaths, going in through our nose, out the mouth, for one. Two. And just continue to breathe at your own pace, your own rhythm, and notice the shifts that go on in your body. How does your energy change as you become more aware of your breath? Do you notice an expansion? Or do you notice perhaps a spot in your body where there's some constriction, tenseness? Our bodies are so amazing. They function without us being aware of most of what they're doing. They are just there doing their job stoically providing a space for our spirit to live in. Even when we don't care for our bodies optimally, they are resilient, able to recover. Cells regenerate. And the natural functions, those automatic functions just continue. So send some gratitude to your body. Perhaps consciously release the tension that you've been holding in certain places now that it's more in your awareness. Again, send the more love to your body. It's beautiful temple that holds your spirit. And as you send that gratitude, I invite you to make a conscious decision that you will visit your body more often connect with your body more often, deliberately love your body more often. And now with your next breath, come back into this time and space. And welcome. Yes, welcome. Um, I, I'm laughing because your, I mean, your meditations are always awesome <laughs> and beautiful and perfect and divine. And I'm sitting here laughing because I feel like you were only talking to me. Like, and I so needed to hear every single word that you said. Um, and this is off topic. I was not planning on disclosing this, but this is like full disclosure. Um, so, and I feel like there's so many of us that could totally relate. And 
about your body uh, being resilient, whether you are in a place where you're treating it good or not, your body still is resilient and your body is still taking care of you, whether or not you are taking care of it. And, and that is mm -hmm. beautiful. And I know we know that, but to hear that is amazing. So yeah, I, I love the divineness that comes through you in, in your meditations. And thank you. Um, that was not where I was going earlier this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is so, I, this is not on my notes. Trust me. Um, I, so I'm sitting here and you're talking about, uh, you know, tuning into your body, listening to your body. Where is there any tenseness? And just saying, and this has been going on for the past really strongly for the past couple of weeks and it's become painful and it's a tenseness that's in my body it's so tense and I don't even know that I'm doing it I don't realize I'm doing it so you reminding us to tune into our resilient bodies is a huge message not only for me but I know it's going to hit a lot of people in a similar way as well but it's my butt my butt hurts like the muscles. I, I, I swear I'm like so tensed up and I must be just my whole body, I think is just tense, but like my legs, I think are just kind of coming together in a tense way. Cause I kind of catch myself sometimes, but I think I've been doing it for so long that my muscles are like, okay. You know, like when you, when you first exercise and you're doing like arm day or butt day or belly day like that that whole day you feel it like it hurts the next day you can't do anything and that's what it feels like it feels like my muscles in my butt are so sore just from overworking but my body is still resilient my body is still going still moving forward still going on but it's making me pay attention like you said tuning into your body tuning into where and why you're holding any resilience so i know and now this is turned up. I think it's been going on for, for months and months, but now it's turned up the volume so that I can physically feel it. Um, so now that I can physically feel it, it makes me want to pay attention more and go into my body more and see why am I tense and talk to that tenseness in my body and, you know, see it released and catch myself and, you know, work with the angels and, and work with your higher self and work with what your body is asking of you. Why are you tense wherever you are? No matter where you are tense in your body, it could be your shoulder. A lot of people will sense it in their neck or their back or their shoulders or wherever. In my case, your butt. Um, but yeah, mine's right at the shoulder blade and it's on my right side. And I'm oftentimes have to remind myself to, to like center, you know, one of my favorite ways to get myself back in my body and really honor my body is by centering. So kind of like leaning forward a little bit and finding kind of that true line, that energetic snap point, you know, heaven and earth, and then, you know, going back and then going right to left and then up and down. And I, that's when I realize how tense and how much energy I carry through here. And yes, how resilient my body is because, you know, it, it always supports me. We get up every morning, we do our thing. I'm, you know, just moved into my new house, I'm unpacking, I'm doing all of these things. And yeah, my body totally supports me. And um, even when I push it a little bit. <laughs> And don't we all, we all push ourselves. And again, our body is resilient. Our body still continues to take care of us. Um, and, you know, on the topic of resiliency, the times right now are just so, <coughs> excuse me, they're so unpredictable and so all over the place. And the message that I was getting, because I was tuning in before our call this morning and just tuning in to, um, you know, what's coming through in the message that we're being asked to deliver this morning. Um, and it's all about staying the course. And any of you who saw um, that cute little cartoon, um, uh, you know, he, the fish, um, oh my gosh. He says, just keep swimming. Oh, Nemo. Nemo, finding Nemo. 
just yeah. keep swimming, just keep swimming. Because going back to, you know, our bodies being resilient, our bodies will take care of us. Um, so just keep swimming. And I know there's people in all kinds of predicaments and all kinds of situations. And, you know, we have our own crosses to bear. And that's one of my things that I say all the time. We have, we all have our own crosses to bear. And We've all been put in our own certain challenges because of the pandemic and because of, you know, maybe home, maybe your homeschooling or maybe your work is is down its capacity or shut down right now. Yeah. You know, wherever you live and you can't go to work or your your spouse is out of work. Um, so everybody is facing different challenges. And then there's people who are thriving because of the pandemic, where you know they, they've created new possibilities. Um, because of the situations that we're all in, um, especially people who are making masks, right? Oh my goodness, yeah. So, you know, so there's there's definitely opportunities abound for this pandemic as well. So no matter where you are, it, the message today that we're here to bring is about staying resilient, staying the course, just keep swimming. And because there's no end in sight. I mean, any of us, it's only a prediction. None of us can really say, you yeah. know, with the presidency, you know, coming up this week, the change, the change in presidency coming up this week and in the pandemic, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. So, but take, take the, take the knowing that all is going to be well, you know, we're going to get through this. There is light at the end of this tunnel. We all are going to get through it. And yes, there's going to be change. And I think that's a given. We're all facing change to some degree. And change is not always bad. Change is change. And it puts us out of our comfort zone a lot of times. But that's not a bad thing either. You know, that is allowing us to grow. If we're staying in our comfort zone all the time, then where is there opportunity for growth, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it, you know, to go back to the body thing, I mean, we all started as a cell that started splitting. I mean, you know, that's change. That's the evolution of mm -hmm. us being created into this beautiful body. And, you know, we are resilient. If you think about it, you know, the skin has the ability to heal itself. And, you know, some of our organs can get quite damaged and still heal themselves. You know, there's the power of prayer and, you know, energy work for healing ourselves, both emotionally and physically. And just, it's so important to just remember that we're constantly in change. You know, I mean, you brush your hair in the morning and you lose a few because new ones are growing in, right? You know, I mean, there's just this constant shift in our energy and in our physical bodies. And if we can keep that in mind, then, you know, then the energetic shift, the shifts that come from outside of us, feels like it'll be easier to, to you know, I, the word manage is coming in, but we, I mean, it's not really we're managing it like we can control it, but it's more um, of integrating that energy of the different, the different way of being because we every moment we are different we are unique we have changed every breath we have changed and you know that's the beautiful way to look at resiliency is that we don't have to do anything to be resilient by nature by design we are mm -hmm. we just yep. have to stop fighting it <laughs> And that's the key and that's the trick. That's the challenge, right? And, and, and you know, we fight different things to different degrees and, and for different reasons. Yeah. And you can, only, you can only, you know, do that for so long and it gets exhausting. And I, and I know, and I, that's the other thing I find too is a lot of people are saying they're tired. They're, they're exhausted, they're tired, they're sleepy. Um, you know, because to your point, I think a lot of people are fighting and resisting the change and resisting the growth. 
Yeah. And that's that that can be really challenging. We kind of get a little comfortable in our little homes with our people and in our jobs and our finances, and we just kind of get comfortable. And then all of a sudden, boom, the whole world changes and we're all affected. So it is, it's a big, it's a big change. It is funny this morning with that. I was just gonna say, and it's that's one where it's outside of us, right? It's not like a change that we've initiated or that we right. contemplated. Mm -mm. It's one that just boom, here it is. And you know, what are the what are the inner work that we can do, allowing um, the change to not completely knock us off? You know, this is a thing that one of my friends gave me this. Oh. And um, it's like return to your center. When things come along that knock you off, kind of like that centering exercise that I was doing before, it's it's just a, it's a weevil. You remember those, right? Yep, so, weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. They don't fall down, and you know that's what resiliency is. It's the ability to kind of okay, you you get knocked off your center, but you can come back in again, and you're not going to give up. You're not going to become negative you know you're not going to fight it i mean yes you're going to advocate for yourself you're going to stand for yourself i am totally not talking about not you know standing up for yourself or what's right and what your beliefs are your morals those are you know one of the five pillars here but it's it's not allowing the unexpected things to knock you off your feet so that you can't get back up again. And that's what I'm seeing, or that's what I'm seeing out in the world is some people that have had, you know, it's been so hard for them that they can't regain their center. They can't kind of come back to that middle ground where they can feel solid enough to integrate the new energy because I mean, didn't we just go into the age of Aquarius? So, I mean, we're now in a whole different energetic way of being. So, yeah. you know, it's finding that way to keep your balance because that's what resiliency is for me. It's balance. It's allowing that. Mm -hmm. And that's the key is allowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. This morning when I was getting ready, I was listening to, I usually listen to podcasts while I'm getting ready and driving in the car. I'm always listening to podcasts. And this morning, this woman I was listening to, she was amazing. And I just, she, everything she said was like, I, I so related to every word she said. And one of the things that she was talking about was, um, she was talking about the mind and how if the mind is just left alone to, to leave us, it can take us to some pretty wild and crazy places. So she talked about marrying the mind with the heart. Ooh, I like that. Me too. And she just said, when you, when you, how did she say? She said, don't, don't find your way to your heart, feel your way to your heart. Like, don't look for your heart, feel your way to your heart, which I thought was really something to think about and how to, to, to do that in a powerful way. Um, but she said to marry the mind to the heart. That way you're not off aimlessly following your mind. Because, you know, our mind can play tricks on us. Our mind can lead us into places um, in all directions. Our mind can just go <laughs> in so many different places all at the same time, right? I think we're all, we all know what that is is about. And so, but when you, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like, it's almost like she's saying to ground your mind, Ooh. And your grounding spot is your heart. Mm -hmm. And when your mind is grounded to your heart, it's balanced. It brings balance to your mind. And when you're coming to the world and to your family and to yourself from your mind being grounded to your heart, you, you're, you're coming to all of those things in a more rounded way, yes, but in a more purposeful way. You're, 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 you're working and um, living more and more 
in your purpose when you're marrying your mind to your heart because this there's a lot of magic there's a lot of answers in our heart and a lot of times we don't go to our heart for answers right, right? we go to our brain and our brain is doing its work our brain is doing its job it's it's we have a brain to to think for us right and to and analyze things and rationalize things and that's wonderful and we can't live without our brain absolutely but the the other piece of it is grounding that into your almost like grounding to your soul when you're grounding your mind to your heart yeah. and you just it, you, you get a new sense of direction and a new sense of thinking you think differently when your mind is grounded to your heart because that's where the magic lies that's where your truth resides and when you're tapping your mind to your truth and your heart and grounding there the magic is just unimaginable at that point, right? Oh yeah, oh, it totally is. And it's a, it's the center of our energetic being too, right? You know, the heart chakra, the fourth chakra is right in the center of our energetic bodies and it connects us to that divine wisdom um, from father sky, the divine masculine. It connects us to that divine wisdom with mother earth and the divine feminine it's the center of everything and i've always said the heart is the most intuitive muscle it truly always knows the truth and it's a great filter so that's that's and and when you do that it does bring about that divine balance you know you're you're not totally in your head you've got your body to filter through and discern the truth because our bodies are you know, such great filters for energy, right? Mm. You know, that, that clear sentience that everybody has the ability to use. Some people are, have it as a little bit of a stronger one than others. But yeah, washing that through our hearts is so powerful. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think, um, you know, and I think with regard to our theme in resiliency, I think that especially now that that can help us be or become more resilient by, you know, marrying the two and following that wisdom and following that guidance. And, you know, you'll receive, they'll talk to each other. Your heart will talk to your, your mind and your mind will talk to your heart and you can kind of pass things through to each other. You know, Hey, how does this feel? How does this feel? You know, just kind of check in with each other, right? But you're coming from a more grounded place. And I think that it will allow for more resiliency, more power, more power in your body, more power in your choices, more power in your, um, in your decisions and, and the way that you, you go out into the world. I think you'll be able to come out more stronger and more, more resilient, more resilient is, is the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. And we're connected. And um, if anybody's out there in Facebook land, if you've got any comments or observations, um, we would love to hear from you. I am checking. So, uh, you know, just type a comment in there and uh, we're happy to, to, to uh, have you express your, how you are being resilient or how you, um, feel about that concept of marrying the head and the heart. I think that that's, it's a divine union, right? Divine union, just like, and it's sacred, just like everything else. I think it's such a beautiful and powerful reminder. And I know that we've done this exercise before, but you know, it, it, I'm being guided to share it again as a way for people to remember how to anchor in the truth in their hearts. You know, if you just put your hands over your heart, and ask a question, your heart will give you the answer. You know, it's going to be expanded if it's good for you. It's going, you're going to feel contracted or negative or cold or something. If it's something that's not good for you, or if it's not the truth. So you can easily pull that energy from your head into your heart and ground it and ask any question, any yes or no question. And, um, and you're going to get verification. And how powerful is that in these turbulent times to be able to ground into our own bodies 
you know, this beautiful temple that we live in and, and be able to get the answer and know, okay, you know, Th this is a perceived danger. You know, one of the things about the brain <laughs> is we've got that reptilian piece, which is fight or flight. And oftentimes we're, we are making our decisions from that spot instead of from the heart. So, you know, really being able to, is this a real danger? Is this a perceived danger? Is, you know, is this the right choice for me? Is this the right action for me? Is the right action for me not to act? Because sometimes that's the, 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 um, the solution too. Sometimes it's the right thing at the wrong time. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it can often be a timing thing. Power, um, yes. And you know, one thing too, to kind of understand what the feelings mean is to take something that you know might not be for your best good um and i this is a poor excuse but like a, a cigarette like you know that's not good for your health right so that's something you could say you know should i be smoking this cigarette you know the answer is going to be a definite no and how does that feel in your body mm -hmm. so get to know what your no's mean and then get to know what your yeses mean and how your body because what your body my body their body we they they respond a little bit differently you know some people might get chills some people might get warm some people like you said might get cold but but we all have our certain no's you know some people for um no like their body might go forward some people their bodies might go backward you know so find your personal yeses and no's and and you know what feels right to your body and what doesn't feel right to your body and so try it out and then you know like you said carolyn follow that and and ask yourself those yes and no questions and again it just goes back to the resiliency and how you're learning how to prepare your body to serve you in a more resilient way and to build your resilience through mm -hmm. these turbulent times yeah because you know there is so much that is outside of us and we can only um, they're saying manage again. <laughs> um, yeah. We can only manage ourselves. We can only manage the way we choose to respond. And, you know, I think they, my angels are being very deliberate with using the word respond instead of react because react is that instantaneous, our brain, our reptilian brain does something. When we respond, we are doing that head heart filter in you know and allowing in the divine guidance. We're allowing in our angels, we're allowing in you know the energy that we sense out, our bodies sense out around us all of the other time. We're you know integrating all of that into a response. And even if it's just a breath in between. There's so much more power. There's so much more knowledge and information for us to be able to be resilient rather than re reactive because that's, that's when we say things that we don't really mean or we, or we can make problems more challenging because we've reacted without having all of the energetic knowledge that's available to us as these beautiful divine beings that we are, because we all are. We certainly are. And our bodies are full of divine wisdom. We're born with it. We came here with it. Um, you know, we're, our bodies are ancient. Our, our, our physical bodies aren't, but our, our mind and our soul is very ancient. And so our bodies are full and blessed with so much wisdom and knowledge. And it's about, sometimes we just need to be reminded of that and and kind of check in and speak to your heart like you said and when you physically put your hand on your heart it, that's where your focus goes your focus is going to go to your heart so if you need to physically put your hand there until you get used to um you know connecting to your heart then do that but connect and receive connect and receive how what is coming back to your mind and and start journaling start writing things down and recording what you're receiving because you're going to get a lot of information and you know you might discount it at the time but if you write it down you'll see that it's it did come in for a purpose you may not know what that purpose is and that meaning is in that moment it may sound outlandish or 
you know, have nothing to do with what you're thinking or talking about, but trust in the process. And you're, when you're asking and you're tuning in, you're going to get, you're taking that opportunity to ask, you're going to get the, the responses. So pay attention to them and write them down and then go back. When you're looking for some answers, go back and you, you've already, you've already, you've already gotten them. Yeah. Yeah. The power of, um, you know, the journal. And you know, when I first, you know, this, when I first started doing this work, I'm like, oh, I don't want to write, but it doesn't mean you have to write complete sentences. It just means jot down, you know, basic thoughts, a few yeah. bullet points, you know, that's your brain getting in the way and creating the excuse of why you can't do this. Just trying to keep you safe, but the only way you know is how, which is you know, repeat old patterns. Mm -hmm. Those necess aren't necess they have kept us alive, <laughs> but they haven't necessarily helped us to thrive. And so right, and I think that's where the brain and the heart are talking to each other. The mm -hmm. the heart is saying right, and the brain is like, I don't want to write. But the heart is saying, yes, you do want to write. Trust me, you want to write. This is where your truth is. You want to see your truth. Yeah, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. so powerful to, to be able to do that. And, and then, you know, one of the beautiful things about our brains, right? They're resilient. They can, they can adapt and recreate balance all the time is as we prove to our brains that we can do something, that it can be fun, they the brain adjusts and adapts too you know it's like yes. a, every aspect of our body is so resilient and adaptable it's it's just a, incredible to me it is what a what a gift it is absolutely yep well i think we have given and received so much really great wisdom today right i mean and we were just off um, but, but in beautiful ways. And I think that we just, we've got so many, um, really gold nuggets today to, to take away for our week this week. And, uh, and thank you, Carolyn, for, you know, bringing your divine wisdom in and mine and, and bringing this together and, and, and back to your, um, point about asking people in Facebook land to put their comments and please, please use the comment box. We love to read how you are feeling and where you're at. And, and if any of our, um, you know, wisdom that's come through um, touches you or makes sense with you and how you can add to it, 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 you know, it really affects all of us. So, you know, it's not really just for us, it's for everybody to read. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful to get that feedback and to, to continue the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, longer than just this, brief amount of time that we have on a Sunday morning. It's, you know, it's wonderful when we can allow it to, to move into the week and to kind of grow and expand because that's really what it's all about is expanding our, our connection and, you know, our consciousness. Yes. So, yeah, please do comment, please do connect and um, yay. Yes, yay. All right, well, I need to put this down for just one second so I can grab my tenants here. They're in the back of my computer. <laughs> That's a really good place for them. <laughs> you always know where they are. I always know where they are. And until I, you know, because I'm still moving in, until I um, <laughs> completely have figured out where every home is going to be, this way I always, always have them. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Words to live by, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. 
I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth. And so it is. So it is. So remember, use your sacred divine heart. Go there, go there, go there, go there often. We all need that reminder. We're, we're no different. We all need the reminder. We do. All right. Blessed be. And we will Blessed see be. you again next. Well, we'll see you in the Facebook group and we'll be here again next month. All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.